How you doing class? Dr. Petty here and today we're going to be covering the uh, fifth project um, or at least topic five's project of Excel. Um, I believe it is the uh, module six and um, in this lesson we're going to be learning how to do several different types of formulas referencing uh, formulas between different sheets and then also looking up different types of lookups and using some of the more advanced features of Excel with regard to data presentation and data organization. So um, let's just go ahead and get right into this. And uh, first thing we want to do for all of these assignments, of course, is to uh, we're going to save as I'm going to go ahead and just change this one to a two here. And I'm going to go ahead and click save and we're good to go. We're ready to begin. OK, so project steps. Step one, I'm reading from the instructions if you'd like to follow along. Uh, Bao Vong is the sales manager for Murray Medical, a medical device manufacturer with headquarters in Morristown, New Jersey. Bao is analyzing the performance of account representatives and the sales of a company's medical devices. She asks for your help in using Excel tables to complete the analysis. Go to the account representatives worksheet, which lists details about Murray Medical account representatives and their clients, sales, and evaluations. Format the completed account representatives data, range A10 through I29, as a table with the headers using dark green table style medium three so that Bao can summarize and filter the data. Use account reps as the name of the table. So essentially what we want to do here is we want to convert this range into a table. And um, even though we're in Excel and everything kind of looks like a table, a table contains data that's kind of related to itself. And it helps us to organize data within that table if we call it a table. And we can actually reference a whole table too. So we can actually treat it as an object within Excel, which makes it kind of easier if you have multiple tables that you need to reference each other. Okay, so first thing we need to do is convert this to a table, but first we need to make sure we're in the right range. And this says A10 through I29. So I'm gonna say A10, there's I29. I'm gonna go ahead and just select this range. And now what I need to do is convert this to a table. So to do that, I'm gonna come over here to the format as a table button that's here. And we're gonna look for the one that they refer us to, which is, yeah, format the completed account representative data as a table with headers um, using the medium three. So we're going to look for the medium three uh, style here, dark green table style medium three. And we'll go ahead and apply this. And uh, we want to make sure that this box is checked because this says my table has headers. Headers are these little identifiers that are up here. Um, you know, like client ID, client name, account rep. So you want to make sure that this box stays checked and go ahead and click OK. Now, um, you're going to get this little message that says, hey, do you want to discover more about your data? Just go ahead and click not now. We don't need that right now. That is a, a tool that's built into Excel that helps you analyze data and gives you some options based on what you selected, the best way that you can organize and present it. But we're just not doing that right now. So you'll see as once I've labeled this as a table, I get these little boxes with these little drop down arrows. And these are actually like little filters that I could, you know, deselect and select various things and make information appear or disappear from this table. But for now, it looks like we've done this step right. So the only thing we want to do is uh, one thing I forgot to do. I'm going to go ahead and select this range again. Notice up here, this says table two. Uh, we need to make sure that this says account reps because we want to name the table and later on we're going to be referencing this table based on the name. So we need to make sure that we have that information in there and that it's correct. So I'm just, I think I misspelled that. So account reps. Okay. Eh, I didn't save it. So if it doesn't do that, uh, save for you. You just have to just hit enter afterwards. I'm gonna do this again. Do this again no spaces and I'm gonna hit enter this time it should have saved account reps so once you select that table and you convert it to a table you want to make sure that you change the name here under table names or it's not going to turn out good for your assignment so going on uh, to step number two sort the account reps table first in a sitting or ascending order by the name of the account rep and then in descending order 
by total sales so Bao can quickly identify the top sellers for each rep. So let's do that. Let's uh, select this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here to the home tab. I'm going to go to sort and filter, but I'm actually going to ask for a custom sort. Um, this tool, if you missed that, it's just a home tab right here, sort and filter, uh, custom sort. Now here you see there's these different levels. Well, the very first thing we want to do here is plug in the one we want to sort. So sort the account reps table first. Okay, so we're going to select account rep. Um, oh, by name of account. Yeah, by the name of the account rep. So we want to find the uh, account rep name. So that's this one here. So yeah, is it client name, account rep name. Okay. And then we want to sort this based on, you know, we want to sort this in ascending order. So ascending is A to Z, of course, gradually increasing. Um, I'm going to add another level. And at this time, we're going to add um, top seller. So it says here, table first in ascending order by the name of the account rep, and then in descending order by the total sales. So here is total sales, which is right here. It's one of these um, you know, fields. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and we're gonna say descending order. So we're gonna go largest to smallest and I'm gonna click okay. Now it went ahead and sorted this and as you can see, it did a two level sort. So it sorts within the area and then again within the total sales. Um, but that's all you have to do for that step. Let's go ahead and move on to step three. So step three says each account rep is assigned to a tier, which determines whether they receive a salary bonus. Bao wants to list the tier for each account rep according to the bonus tiers data in the range K5 through L9. Okay, so we're gonna be working in K5 through L9, which is right over here. So we're gonna be referencing something on this range. And it says in cell H11, so let's go to cell H11. So there we are. Enter a formula using the VLOOKUP function. Use a structured reference to the eval score G11 as the lookup value. Use an absolute cell reference to the bonus tier data range K through six, L through nine as the table array. Use the tier column, column two as the column index number and do not enter a value for the optional range lookup argument. If Excel does not copy the formula automatically, fill it in using the fill handle through the range it's supposed to. Okay, so here it gives us this little hint in the instructions to avoid a hashtag spill error. Enable implicit intersection by placing this row specifier, um, which is the ampersand or the at symbol in front of the field names. Okay, let's go ahead and set this up. So we're in sale, we're in H11 here. First thing we wanna do is uh, we wanna come over here to auto sum and I'm gonna look for more functions. Now, in this little window that we get here, we get the option to, we can just like type this up directly. I mean, I don't have to look through all of these. I know I'm looking for VLOOKUP. And I'm gonna go ahead and just click go. And voila, there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and just double click that. And now we're gonna start, we're gonna be able to set up our equation here. So what is the first lookup value? So um, use a structured reference to the eval score, uh, cell G11. So the cell G11 is going to be our lookup value. So if you look at G11, which is right here, um, we're going to say a structured reference. Now, what a structured reference means is, you know, rather than just calling out an explicit reference, which is, you know, if I were to just type G11, what we want to do is click on this area within this table to set this up, so this is referencing total sales, and as you see, here's our at sign. We really don't have to do much more beyond that. Okay, so the table array, in this case, is gonna be K6 through L9. So at that time, or at this time, what you wanna do is go ahead and just select this range here. Okay, so um, use the absolute uh, cell to reference. So we wanna use an absolute value here, so what we want to do is I want to put dollar signs in this equation on either side of our column headers here. And this is going to declare this as an absolute reference. Now absolute reference is going to help us do things that divide by negative integers and zero and things like that that help us return a value even if that value is negative. It's a very important feature. Okay, so we have that. Now the column index number, 
It says use the tier column, column two, as the Colix index number. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So column is gonna be number two, and I'm gonna click OK. There we go. That's what we wanted right there. So we should have silver, bronze, silver, silver, um, autocorrect options. Don't worry about that. Uh, if you got that little button, just ignore it. And I think that's it. We just move on to step number four. Mary Medical or Murray Medical awards a bonus of 5% to account rips who earn platinum tier ratings for their clients. In cell I-11, enter a formula using the if function and the structured references that test whether the value in the tier field is equal to platinum. If it is, multiply that value in the total sales field by 0 0.05. Otherwise, enter a zero in the cell. If Excel does not copy the formula, fill it over. Okay, there we go, should be good. Okay, so for this step, what we want to do is we want to set up this equation in here so that we identify who's getting their bonus. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go ahead and we're going to go look for an if function. More functions. Um, yeah, so I'm going to come over here. Actually, we need to be in I-11. So we're going to, I'm going to go here. I'm sorry. So we're going to go over here, more functions if and I'm gonna click OK. All right, so let's set up our logical test. So what we want to do is um, select the, uh, this range. So we want to select the platinum from the tier range, right? So that's what our instruction said says to do. So I'm going to select this. And um, what I also need to do is says equal to platinum. And the value of true here, what I want to do is I want to multiply this, or I want to multiply this up based on the total sales. So I'm just going to click uh, the total sales. I mean, if I were to just go ahead and select that, I see I, I get that right there, uh, which is pretty convenient. Okay, so in the value of false, of course, we already said was value of true is total sales. I'm sorry, I almost forgot something here. We're going to multiply this by 0.05. And the, the value of false is, we're just gonna set this to zero. And um, yeah, so up here, I'm gonna get rid of this because this isn't coming in quite like I like it to. I'm gonna try this, there we go. Uh, instead of highlighting the whole range, go ahead and just select the one cell that we're referencing. So if we're referencing the tier table, just select that cell and you're gonna get that at symbol will generate for you. You won't have to type it in manually. So when I click okay, Looks like we forgot to do one little thing here, so it's okay if we just double click this. Um, we just forgot to set it to if the, the set it to equal to uh, platinum. So here, when I'm gonna come up out here in of this equation, I'm gonna type the equal sign and um, equals platinum. Oops, yeah, I accidentally hit the return key. Equals platinum. There we go, uh, and now it should update. Okay, there we go. So if you look in this cell, when you click in here, this is what your equation should look like. You should only have a few figures here, um, and uh, there you go. So we have our figures, we have our equation built in here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape just so I can get it out of that, but we're ready to move on to the next step. Which is, um, Bao asks you to identify the account reps with high, average, and low evaluation scores. In the evaluation score column, range G11 through G29, create a new icon set conditional formatting rule using the three stars icon. Edit the rule to display a shaded star in the cells with a number type value greater than or equal to eight. Display a half shaded star in cells with a number type greater than or equal to six. Display any unshaded star or display an unshaded star in cells with a number type value less than six. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is you see we have this eval score thing here and what we really wanna do is fill this with stars that give us a visual representation of what's going on. To do this, I'm gonna come over here to conditional formatting. 
we're going to look at icon sets and then we're going to come down to this little rating system down here but before we select this i want you to look at more rules and the reason for that is this you really need to set this up in the wizard it's kind of difficult to do just with the graphic user interface but here if i uh, i'm going to set the icon set to the stars and we're going to go by numbers here and so what is the value? Uh, the very first value is eight. So anybody over an eight is gonna have a value and then anything over a six, right? So, and if you look at the instructions, it says greater than or equal to on both of these. And if you look at these options, you can see greater than or equal to are our options. When I click okay, you can see that the stars populate in here and we have this uh, little rating system within the eval score box. So that was it for that step.